actors. They're just actors. They're actors. Relax. Yeah. Well, they've gotta be. Right? For generations, humans have swapped scary stories around campfires. Now we tell them online on subreddits and message boards. They're called creepy pastas. Channel Zero takes those stories and adapts them for TV. Season two is Brian Russell's No End House. The show's creator, horror writer Nick Antosca, told us that he takes the premise from his favorite creepypastas, then puts his own stamp on them. The first episode of season two covered basically everything that's in the original No End House story, so it's gonna be a mystery what the rest of the season is about. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe to Universe, where we break down all kinds of TV shows and movies like American Horror Story and Rick and Morty, and uh, throw me a follow on Twitter if you want. I'm Rogue Cheddar, and uh, actually, you know what, don't do that. It's not, I'm not very good at Twitter. <laughs> For now, let's take a look at the first episode, This Isn't Real, and see what they changed and what they kept from Brian Russell's original story. The original creepypasta is about a guy named David who goes to the No End House on the recommendation of his junkie friend who tells him that he can get $500 if he makes it all the way through. I would take that deal, but I have terrible instincts. I bought a lot of Pokemon cards as a kid. I thought I'd be rich by now. I'm not rich. As he gets further and further into the No End House, shit starts to really get weird. Um, if you haven't read the original story, just go read it. Go read it. I'll wait. So the twist is that even when he thinks he's escaped the house, he's actually still inside it, and it's like taken over all of reality or something. It really makes you never want to step foot in another haunted house ever again. So from the opening moments of the episode, it's terrifying. We see this woman running down the street, she's being chased, she's being attacked, and she's carved, this isn't real, into her arm, which is like, can you imagine the point you would have to get to to, to carve something into your arm to remind you every time you look at it that reality is f***ed? Some memento shit. Um, if you've read the story, you probably already know what's going on or you suspect at this point, but if you haven't, that must just seem insane, which is awesome. It's a good opener. Channel Zero doesn't tell the exact same story from the same perspective as the creepypasta. Instead, it's four like college-aged young adults who are basically bored after a party, plus like one ex-military dude or something. How'd you hear about this place? I'm looking for it. The house is like a traveling viral video. When it shows up in your town, you see it on your phone or on your TV and you're drawn to it. It's interesting that the house lures people in by like being spooky. I feel like if this was like a, an older story, it, it would be about drawing people in with candy or, or pony rides or just something something positive that you would actually want to experience. Hey, how was it? Did you guys have fun? Oh. All right. They probably should have gotten back in their cars when the sobbing, traumatized people started leaving the house and going in the other direction, but oh well. Inside the No End House, the rooms are different from what we read in the story. For one thing, there are only six of them now. Have a little pity, nice. and will it to my it's city. You. The song that plays as they enter is The Ghost That Never Walked by Bill Murray. Nope, different Bill Murray, early 20th century singer and I have no idea what it's about. When the character in the original story enters the house, the first room is filled with tacky, cheap Halloween decorations. Not so in the show, where the guests are confronted with creepy statues that look just like their own faces. Things change when the lights go out, the music gets creepy, and their statues have been ripped open by, like, statue hands. And yet, for some reason, they keep going. In room two, a creepy dude in a wooden mask walks around staring at them, shoving them, and whispering cryptic messages. In the story, it's a tacky Halloween soundtrack, a fog machine, and a mechanical bat flying in circles. So in the original story, room three is where it starts to really freak David out. There's a chair that's casting a lot of shadows, and he's not casting a shadow at all. In the show, Margot has to walk down a long hallway while staring at a reflection of herself in the mirror. So it seems like room three in both is kind of about self-reflection, and really freaking you out on a personal level. We looked up what orchids mean, and apparently in ancient Greece they were a symbol of virility. Like the root word for orchid is orchis, which means testicle. And I'm guessing that's not what this is about. Although uh, you never know. At this point, the show and the story have really diverged quite a bit. Room four in the story is like a vacuum of sound and light and you can't even hear yourself breathing or your heart beating, which is like really freaky. In the show, Margot enters what looks like an attic with a wall of screens at one end and it's playing this impossible footage of, of her dad who's dead and it looks like it, it's maybe the night that he died and this obviously really freaks her out. So Margot's gone through four rooms of the No End house now. Keep in mind, there is an exit door in every single one of these rooms. I would have been far away from there by now, but she's braver than I am. Room five in the original story 
is like a giant forest somehow encompassed in, inside this house, which is when David starts to realize that this thing is not constrained by the limits of reality. Margot has kind of a similar realization when she enters room five in the show, because it is an exact recreation of her living room on the night when she found her father dead on the couch. That's crazy. It kind of relates back to the first room as well, because they went inside and they see these statues that look like their faces and they're trying to figure out, how did they make these? Maybe they 3D printed them, they took a picture of us while we were waiting in line. Uh, no, it's a freaking ghost house, yo. Room six in the story contains like a little girl who's also the devil somehow, and she yells at you until you go insane, which doesn't sound pleasant. Uh, but long story short, David eventually escapes and he goes back to his own house. And when he goes inside his house, his parents' bodies are like mutilated on the floor and it's terrible. And he realizes that he's still in the house and there's some more but the bottom line is that is where we leave Margot. she's reached her house and instead of finding her parents corpses she finds her dead father alive in the kitchen like nothing ever happened hey martian how was your night the opposite from the original story like he found his alive parents very much dead and she finds her dead dad alive so that's it that's the end of episode one of season two of channel zero Margot's in her house inside the house but that's basically also the entirety of what's in the creepypasta. And that's really exciting because we don't know what the rest of the season is gonna be about. Is she gonna go back inside the house? Are there more rooms after this? Or is she just trapped here forever? That would be really boring, so I hope it's not that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna keep breaking down Channel Zero every week, so thank you for subscribing. If we miss anything, or if you have anything you want us to cover in next week's video, leave it in the comments, yell at me on Twitter. That's what everybody else does. Thanks.